This is a quick example of how you can use a post endpoint in Visual Builder and pass the payload for it using JavaScript. And this is useful when you have complex uh, structure for the post. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to use this endpoint over here, which accepts this input. So in Visual Builder, we're going to define a new service connection that uses a post to this endpoint, and it's gonna create a pet. I'm gonna call this one, for example, pet, pet. And then in the request, you need to provide a body. So let's copy the body, which is this structure. We'll paste it here. Then we can run the test to see that it actually works. Yeah, we get values back, and we'll save this as an example. All right, so now if you're designing a UI, um, the easiest way to get the structure you need is to basically go over to the service um, section here. You find the endpoint, you drag and drop it here. It would offer to create a create form, and then you can basically define the whole structure that you're going to get back here. Okay. Now, the thing is that because this structure actually has some um, indented arrays, um, this is not probably how you're going to input the data, right? Because you need to put in arrays and stuff like that. So you're going to build a different structure for inserting the data. But I wanted to show that you can actually invoke the REST service also just by um, passing in the information from a JavaScript function. So let's do this. Let's pick up another button and place it here. We'll call this one the JS invoke, and we're going to invoke an action chain when we press this button. The first thing we're going to do in this action chain is we're going to call a JavaScript function. And we'll call this function, for example, create body. Okay. So this function can have as many parameters as you want. You can basically add the parameters here or just add them over here so you can have like arg2 and stuff like that. At the end of the day, this function needs to return the body of the load that you're sending, the payload you're sending to the REST service. So again, this would be basically this string. So let's copy this, go back here, and we're going to return this as a string. Um, just make sure that you have everything in one string. So I'm going to do... Um, just quick editing here. Right, so we have one string with the whole structure. Now, of course, you can modify this string. You can have it based on the parameters you got here. You can do an if then else, a construct arrays, whatever you want. At the end of the day, you just want to pass in a string. So for example, we can pass in um, the ID here. We can pass it is 55 and we'll call this one pooch, for example. So this is the end result from this uh, function. So back in your action chain, you have this function, and then you call a REST service. Okay, the REST service can be, for example, this post. You need to provide a body. The body that you're going to assign here is going to be the results from your JavaScript function, which is a string. And then you can just um, see if this works. This should return the name of the pet. So the results from the REST call in the body would be the name of the pet. And we can also, for example, give you the ID of the pet. So that would be the ID over here. Let's switch this to be an info. So that's basically it. And let's run this. And we can open a network inspector to see the REST calls. So by the way, if I put here something like 44 and hello, 
and I press this button, okay, this would call the pet and it would pass in whatever values I put here, 44 and hello, and this is what I get back from um, the return, is the ID and the name. Now, if we use our other button, okay, you can see again it called the pet, we got the result 55 and the name pooch, which also show up here, and this is because the payload we provided is whatever was in the string that we assigned here.